Yeah, hello and welcome to our Abrasive Imaging YouTube channel. Today I will show you something about um, sandblasting a half tone onto granite. Um, at first uh, I'm working with SR3000 from Razist and 3mm. Um, I printed out the artwork black and white on my inkjet printer. And now I'm exposing uh, the artwork directly to the photoresist within four seconds. So this exposure unit is pretty fast. Um, it's working with vacuum um, to transfer the artwork, which is very fine. It's a half tone made with Coral Draw 160 DPI, so very fine detailed. You will see it later on. Now I'm washing the film within, yeah, let's say 40 seconds. Um, the film needs to be washed until it becomes very clear, so clear like glass. So the artwork, um, the unexposed artwork behaves like a soap, so you can wash it away. I, I, I'm using here pressurized water with a flat spray nozzle. It's uh, The nozzle diameter is about 0 0.4 millimeter, so very fine. Um, the, the angle of the nozzle is about 70 degree. And the pressure of the pump is about, yeah, let's say, 70, 70 bars. So it's not that that high pressure but to work with cold water and pressurized water will grant best details that's it and it's really important to to work very very constant constantly moving so not spot wise you can see what I mean with high details. So that's a very, very fine half tone. And uh, yeah, a drawing of mine. And this we will be uh, this this we will be sandblasting on a on a granite book. So here you see the film. It's pretty wet, so it's a little bit milky and s spotted. And here you see it uh, after drying. So it should be completely blue, no milky spots. So that's dried film. That's how it should look like. So now I'm um, I'm uh, applying the film, the washing film, onto the granite book. So the bird I applied already. So I would just wanted to show you how I do it with uh, with half tone pictures. What's important, what's not. So at first you place it so you can also remove it and then you fix it with your fingertip if you're okay with the position. So now you can see that I press all the air to the sides from the middle of the portrait. So I'm not using a squeegee at first, I'm just using my thumb to remove all the air bubbles and then you can use a squeegee to press down the film and the spots down onto the granite. Uh, by the way, so the, the granite should have a temperature about 15 degree, degrees Celsius minimum. So it should be um, stored at room temperature one day before you're applying the film. That's need to make it a little bit more tacky. So here I'm removing the plastic sheet. So the book is pretty curvy, so it's, uh, it's not that easy to remove the plastic sheets without uh, lifting off the film but you can remove it easily with your fingers so but you need to to pay attention that you don't rub off the film so remove the air bubbles and to remove the air bubbles i'm always using a yeah a, a brush re-roll really fine one so and i'm selling this stuff also so no one is producing it that fine except for me <laughs> So just to remove the air bubbles um, between the granite and the half tone dots. And now you can see the inside of my sandblasting cabinet. Now I'm using a pressure pot unit with a very fine tip. So it's a carbide nozzle about two and a half millimeter. So very fine, fine. I'm using aluminum oxide 150 mesh and a pressure of uh, about 30 PSI can see how I remove the membrane of the film so and the light areas these areas are engraved already so now just 
go upside down and from the left to the right and uh, like like a spray painter also over cross um, just to avoid clouds for sandblasting and to avoid missed areas blank areas so and um, we are not sandblasting deep such a fine detailed half tone um, you're not sandblasting deep so just the surface hitting the surface and now I'm uh, sandblasting with the uh, uh, same pressure, the, um, the letter types, and also the drawing. And this you can sandblast a little bit deeper, so that's not the problem. Um, uh, the, the, the letters are pretty, pretty um, yeah, thick, so the letter types, so we have, uh, I mean, it's still much more finer than, <laughs> than any uh, uh, cutting vinyl. But uh, when we talk about half to sandblasting half tones, you should be aware that you, you have half tone dots maybe with a dot size which is not thicker than a hair is. So we're talking about 45, 50 micron. So and that's the reason why you can't sandblast a half tone deep, such a fine one. We just make, uh, we just want to to roughen the surface. And then uh, to put uh, a little bit of color in it, and the and the color infill I will sh I will show you later on. Yeah, that's it. Now I'm uh, applying the color. So this is a resin. Um, the resin is also used to, to work with uh, leaf gold. But I'm not working with leaf gold. I'm working with really, really fine powder. So the powder is, it's not, uh, the particle size is nine micron. So it's very, very fine. It behaves like a liquid. You will see it later on when I put it on the resin. Now I'm just taking little yeah, you can take a sponge or whatever just to apply um, the resin itself. So, and the, this, this resin will um, will harden out within three hours. And now I'm putting some yeah, little gold particles on it. And you see, it, it it behaves like an ink. So it's we're just talking about nine micron big particles. That's just one way to, to, to color infill the granite. And this is pretty, pretty um, new. So most people are working with spray paint or they're working with uh, Molotov from Belton or whatever, but it's not, it's not um, yeah, weather consistent. So um, rain um, and uh, frost and the winter time, summer time, the sun also damages the color. The winter time, so when 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 the uh, humidity is freezing inside the stone, the the, the color comes off too. And um, the benefit of working with such a resin and uh, gold powder or metallic powder is that it's always flexible. So um, now you can see that I take a, a very soft brush to remove the particles and. Um, yeah, the, the resin be, it's still flexible, so it doesn't come off. And I uh, tested it on my own, so I have uh, um, made it on a grave um, of my father. And uh, it's I, I did it the same with aluminum powder, the same uh, particle size. And it's it looks still brand new after one year. And I never had this success with, with any, any acrylic la uh, color or spray paint. You should test it, so it's not very expensive. So resin and yeah, um, metallic powder. So brass or aluminum powder, whatever. Whatever you get at Amazon, eBay, wherever. So in here you can see I, I, I take a razor blade, stainless steel, to remove um, most parts of the, of the um, 
SR3000. You can also take pressurized water to wash it away, but here for the video, for me, it was the fastest way to take a, a razor blade to remove the film. And here you can see also how, how, how the fine detail the artwork is. So it's, it's, it's really a photo. It's, you don't see the spots that big. Now I'm taking a, um, a cotton, a towel or um, a tissue paper and I take uh, the uh, stone color. For what? what uh, so here in Germany uh, they, they take mostly Durol color or Akemi. And uh, you can see that I take a towel or a tissue and I just polish a little bit of ink inside the engraving and that makes it much better for yeah, rainy days for example um, usually if you have a laser engraved image on stone or a sandblast image on stone um, when it's getting wet you, you uh, the, the picture will disappear but if you save it with a, with a drool ink or with a, just a little bit of ink um, I have here light gray instead of white because I don't like it looks like printing and light gray it's much better for the stone so and uh, um, yeah the color will save the, uh, the surface and uh, so the image cell itself doesn't become wet so and it will not disappear during a rainy day so you can always see a clear image on the stone that's the biggest benefit I see and usually you wait after <laughs> before you remove the the gold or the resin with the with the gold powder but here for the video I had no time to wait so usually you're waiting three hours so that the resin hardens out and then you remove uh, it with a razor blade and uh, yeah but you can you can also do it like like I do in the video you can remove the stuff when it's still wet and you should work accurately such a book is not that cheap That's it. Fine details on a granite. Yeah, many thanks for watching and listening. And if you have any, yeah, any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us anytime. Thank you.